Hello everyone and welcome to the Tavern. Today we are looking at the Amazon Fallout TV series. A series that I had some worries about before I started watching. Primarily due to the fact that the trailers didn't look all that good. But the one thing I could say from those trailers is that at least they had the visuals down for the Fallout universe. However, it is an Amazon show which already makes me a little bit nervous about its quality, as Amazon originals really do vary in terms of how good they can be. Let's get started with our review of Fallout. And I will try to keep the spoilers to a minimum. The one thing I want to say before I start talking about the story is that this series is not newcomer friendly. They don't really explain to you what the vaults are, they don't really explain to you what ghouls are, they barely explain to you what the Brotherhood of Steel does. It all works based on you knowing more about the Fallout universe. So for anyone who wants to get into the Fallout universe, this is not the place to start. The one thing I will say in its favor is we open up with a flashback right before the bombs are dropped, which introduces us to one of our characters that we will get to shortly. We also continue to see flashbacks from the pre-war era, which really does help flesh out the backstory of the universe. However, by the time you get enough of that backstory and you learn how vaults work, it is episode 6. So like I said, not very newbie friendly. But for those who know the Fallout universe, well, our first major character who we focus on is Lucy. Lucy lives in a vault and she is going to go get married as a form of ritual that they have going between the various vaults. And after her marriage, she has an awkward sex scene, one of several in this show, which is just poorly shot. And anyhow, she discovers that her new husband is irradiated. How he was able to have a sex scene, who knows? But from that, she realizes that these people are from the surface and that the vault is under attack. Lucy then goes to help defend the vault alongside other friends and family members. When the attack is over, her father is taken away and Lucy is determined to go on a quest to find her dad, which leads her to the surface where she meets new characters and starts putting clues together as to where her dad was taken. Meanwhile, we see Maximus, who is a member of what we're told is the Brotherhood of Steel, but turns out to be more like a gang of thugs who like technology, which is not how the Brotherhood is usually portrayed. He isn't shown to be skilled or have a lot of intelligence, he's just kind of shown to be a weakling and kind of an idiot. But anyhow, he gets chosen to be a squire after the original squire gets wounded. Yay, second best. Always the good choice for storytelling. He then leaves with his knight to go hunt down an escaped member of the Enclave who has important information. From there we follow Maximus as he tries to prove himself as a knight, fails miserably because he's not a particularly good character. Finally we have the ghoul who is known as Cooper, or Coop. He is a bounty hunter and he really just kind of seems to care about money. However, the flashbacks that I talked about earlier do tie into his backstory, which helps flesh out his character as the story progresses. His search for the bounty brings him to the same town as Maximus and Lucy, and they all kind of get embroiled in the events surrounding the escaped Enclave scientist. From here, it leads onto a quest, with each character having a reason to want the information that the Enclave scientist has. As the story progresses, we go to different locations, we end up meeting a few other random side characters, we have a little bit of filler, and an ending that not only feels rushed, but is one of those, here's a bunch of revelations that essentially ruin the entire story we've seen thus far. You know, because it subverts expectations. One of the reasons why the story isn't great is that the writing is just straight up terrible, and you can really see this when it tries to discuss bigger themes and concepts in the show. We only have two major themes that seem to flow throughout the entire series, and they're both handled like a preschooler trying to juggle chainsaws. First is Corporate Greed Equals Bad. Definitely a theme many Fallout games have. The big problem is the way it's handled is very sloppy. We don't really get to see the evils of Vault-Tec until near the end of the series, when they should have been a prevailing evil the whole time. We get hints about this or that, but unless you're already familiar with Vault-Tec and the other amoral corporate organizations of the Fallout universe, you're not really going to be feeling that energy. A lot of it comes from your preconceptions as a Fallout game player. 
In addition to that, while they do have one really great scene where a character talks about the horrible nature of corporations essentially running the government, which, you know, yeah, that's been a problem for a while, and some points about the military-industrial complex, for the most part this is horribly mishandled, and only a theme they really explore in the flashbacks, which don't get nearly as much time as the Wasteland storyline. The second is that war is bad, but we really see nothing much about the war. We hear about some of the conflicts, as Cooper was a veteran of the battling in Alaska against an unnamed enemy, because this series is afraid to paint China as a bad guy, probably because Amazon and various aspects of Hollywood are afraid of painting China as a bad guy. They have very limited human rights, they have certain kinds of camps there, oh and they've been pointing guns at Japan and Taiwan for years, oh and that whole thing if you acknowledge Taiwan's existence they get very very upset at you. But you know, you know, no, they're totally not a bad guy in any sort of way now or in the future. Anyhow, because they're too afraid to talk about war, you don't really see much of that theme until the very end when the Brotherhood attack a settlement, which we're supposed to think is shocking, but since there hasn't been proper build-up for either of these two factions, it's very difficult to even care. Also, could have used more laser weapons? It feels like a shoehorned theme at the end going, Oh, war? Hmm? Duh? Hmm? Pretty cruel, right? Makes you think. Who are the real monsters? That kind of stupid thing, and it's really ham-fisted and terrible. All the other types of themes they go for are failed due to contradictory storyline moments or incomplete exploration of ideas. One of the big problems with the bad writing in this show is the characters, as they come off unlikable or highly annoying. However, I'd also point out that some of the actors aren't that good either. There's a lot of bad actors in this show. It seems like they spent a lot of money on other aspects of the show and forgot to spend money on good actors, with some exceptions. The first of those exceptions is Lucy. Our main is pretty good. You can tell the actress is really trying hard with the garbage tier dialogue she's given, and the way that she makes her eyes go crazy wide to the point that they look like they're about to pop out of her skull when she's looking around at stuff really adds to her character and that sense that Lucy is really surprised and astonished by all the different things she is seeing now that she's left the vault. Her acting is fairly decent, and she becomes a fairly likable character as the story progresses. Our worst actor is Maximus. Not only is the actor terrible, not only is his dialogue terrible, the character himself is terrible. He's a liar, he's a jerk, he basically doesn't really get much of an arc other than occasionally he realizes he should do the right thing because someone else tells him to do it. He's more or less a horrible character. He isn't likable, relatable, or even entertaining. And any time he came on screen, it was just like a, ugh, all right, Maximus is in this. In addition to that, they do that Iron Man, we're going to show you his head inside the helmet stuff, which works in Iron Man because Robert Downey Jr. is a good actor who then can emote with his face. The actor playing Maximus cannot emote with his face at all. He just has, to steal the phrase from Mystery Science Theater, dull surprise. That's all you ever see is just kind of this dull, dim-witted look on the character's face. All the Maximus sequences are the worst parts of the show. Finally, we have Cooper, the ghoul. Not only is the actor great, but you also have a lot of emotional scenes both in the flashbacks and in the current times that build up his character, and the actor for Cooper does an amazing job with that. Not only that, but when you get those little moments with him and Lucy or him and Dogmeat where he's not as much of a hardened jerk, he really comes off like an interesting character, but has also those moments where he's gunslinging like the best of them and he gets a few decent one-liners as well. A great actor who is able to elevate mediocre dialogue into something better. As I said multiple times while watching this show, I would much rather watch the Cooper and Dogmeat series than watch anything else that's going on with any of these other characters. As for minor characters, we got a couple that I want to kind of discuss. The first is Snip Snip. He is a one-off character in Episode 4, a robot that has all that cheery robot dialogue you would recognize from the games, but also says things that are completely psychotic. 
and it makes him very funny. It really adds in that gallows humor that Fallout is known for. And I really do wish Snip Snip stuck around for the rest of the show. Unfortunately, he does not, which is a detriment to the series. But it's nice to see a character that feels like an NPC you would have run into in a Fallout game. Next, we have Norm. Norm is Lucy's brother who has his own drama going on in the vault after Lucy leaves. Not only is the Overseer upset that somebody left, but also the fact that there seems to be some secrets going on behind the scenes, and Norm is investigating that. The kid playing Norm does an okay job, and overall I wouldn't mind to see more of the investigations and adventures of Norm. Then we have Betty. Betty is the Overseer who takes over after Lucy's father is kidnapped. You clearly have a nice villainous character with a big smile on her face with Betty, and the actress does a great job really making that creepy feeling you're getting that Betty is hiding some very important things from the other characters in the vault. There isn't a lot of resolution with Betty by the end of the series, but I did like her as this very manipulative person with a big bright smile. You don't see those kinds of characters too often. Finally, we have Barb. Barb is Cooper's wife in the flashbacks. She's also a staff member of Vault Tech. She works really well as a counterpoint to Cooper's worries about Vault Tech and about the upcoming war and about other issues that are going on while she is very much in that mentality of it's going to work out. We're going to have a place that we will be safe. We will be able to protect our daughter and our family and continue life the way we know it. Just, you know, in a vault when the war happens. The duality between Cooper and his wife works really, really well, and I think the actress did a great job really showing that caring wife, but also the darker side of Vault Tech in the Fallout universe. The audio is easily the best part of the show. We have so much music from the more recent games that I really do appreciate it. They really took the time to try to get as many songs as they could into the eight episodes. In addition to that, they were able to use diegetic music, which means we get to hear music playing on a jukebox, on the radio, various radios actually, and sometimes as speakers in the vaults or other locations the characters go to. I appreciate that. I wish all the actual licensed music was diegetic the entire time. I mean, Lucy has her Pip-Boy, the Pip-Boy has a radio. You could have made that a plot point where one of the characters tells her to turn that damn thing off, you're gonna get a bunch of critters coming after us, or what have you. The background music is relatively fine, if not a little bit forgettable, but it does build the ambience when they need to make those darker, spookier moments. In addition to that, there is the usage of the Fallout theme and variations of the Fallout theme for certain scenes. And I do like that. I think that was clever and works for the show. Lastly, the sound effects are all the sound effects you'd know from the game. There are only a few times here or there where the sound effects do not line up with the games. But overall, they did a great job with the sound design in this series. As for the visuals, the sets are amazing. We clearly have a mix of practical and computer-generated sets, but they look just like the games. This is what the world of Fallout is supposed to look like, and they did a great job recreating that world. In addition to that, many of the costumes also look like clothing from Fallout. Even the vault jumpsuits don't look as silly as one might have expected. Those visuals were great. However, we have a lot of weird fades to black. I understand this is to be a location for commercials, but it's so off-putting and it's so jarring when it happens, and it feels very messy as if the creators of the show really don't know how to do a fade that can lead into commercials. They just make things fade to black, way to beat, and then have it fade from black. Really sloppy, and it shows an amateur hand at this production. Speaking of which, they can't shoot action very well in this either. While we do get the over-the-top blood, the way the action is shot is very sloppy. The slow motion is digital slow motion. It is not actually shot with a slow motion camera, which ends up making everything have that choppy look that they would have in the game. And while that's great if you're trying to do a game reference, it doesn't look right when you're doing cinematic storytelling. In addition to that, the action has no energy the way it is shot and portrayed in the show. It is very sloppy, it's a real mess, and it honestly takes away from the show. 
because what you want is really good clean action and what you get is just really bad either wide static shots or cut away too quickly or using the wrong kind of camera angle. Oh, in addition to parts where it's so dark all you see is the muzzle flashes. Always great. Whole lot of sloppy mistakes like that that make the action nearly unwatchable. In fact, most of the cinematography is pretty sloppy and it really stands out because you have these really cool sets and people who have no idea how to shoot them. It ends up making the show visually boring to watch because they never focus on the right things and half the time we have these large wide shots of the characters right in the middle because we're probably shooting on some sort of green screen type set or the cinematographer does not know how to do more dynamic shots of the characters. Either way, visually, the series really suffers because of the bad camera work. When I had seen only a few episodes, I made a post explaining that the series doesn't follow the lore well enough to make fans happy, but it also doesn't explain anything to make newcomers happy. Bringing me to one key question. Who is this show for? If you're going to spit on the continuity and you're going to insult fans, especially those of New Vegas and the classic games, then make the series more accessible to new viewers who don't know this universe but might get into it with this show. But it doesn't do that either. It's a weird mess of I can't tell who this show is for or why they made the decisions they made, which I guess can be said for a lot of video game adaptations over the years. The sad part is, there's so much wasted potential with this show. When you have the great music and the beautiful sets, a handful of good actors, though they could use more good actors, that would have been nice, you could have made a really great show with some interesting satire, some great action, and some cool looking monsters, which we get very, very few of. I would love to see Paul Verhoeven's take on Fallout. The people that got to do this show have no idea what they're doing, and the thing becomes a slog to watch by the end. In fact, there's so many problems, you could understand why those stories of Amazon cancelling Season 2 were coming out before the show even hit the air. They also pushed the release date up several times, because they just wanted to get it one and done. Granted, there are those stories coming out about how California is going to offer them tax rebates for filming Season 2 in state. So we'll see what happens, because I get the feeling two years from now, or thereabouts, I'll be talking about Season 2 and yelling even more. Overall, my final verdict is 1.5 out of 5. Not recommended, even for fans. This show has way too many problems. While I do think the audio is well done, and I love the sets and costumes, as well as Lucy and Cooper, overall we have so many problems. We have a terrible script, we have bad acting, we have bad action, we have annoying characters, destroys lore, it's not newcomer friendly, and worst of all, it's not fun or funny. There's a couple good laughs here or there, but in eight episodes, at most, I would do a small guffaw when Fallout is known for its humor, its very dark, often caustic humor, and they can't do it right. The scenes that are supposed to be funny tend to be either facepalm worthy, groan worthy, or both. When the show started, I was relatively neutral. The first thing I said to my brother after episode one was, you know, I don't hate this. This could be a good show. I really started to have those kinds of expectations. While episodes 2 and 3 had some problems, by episode 4 I was like, oh, this is Fallout. This is great. This is what I want. Okay, cool. If they can keep this up, the rest of the show is going to be great. And then it just falls flat on its face. And episode 8 made me hate the show. Episode 7 brought me on the edge of wanting to just not see episode 8. And then episode 8 just made me want to scream with all the terrible choices that were made and the big revelations that are supposed to be shocking and subversive but just turn out to be really stupid and kind of ruin the whole point the show was trying to make in addition to ruining the character journeys and the reward you feel at the end for having completed the journey with the character. The show is terrible, and I know a lot of people predicted that, but it really would have been nice to get a good Fallout series. All that being said, I'd like to know what you thought of the series in the comments. In addition to that, look forward to my spoiler-heavy discussion of the show, where my brother and I are going to break down the good and bad of Fallout much more in depth. Until next time, thank you for watching, I'll see you at the tavern, but more importantly remember, war. War never changes.